Welcome to another AEW installment of Tag Me In, where the triple threat brain trust a tag over the good, the bad, and everything in between in the world of professional wrestling. I, of course, am the unofficially official Lip Dizzle, joined with none other than the less than stealthy unicorn himself. Move aside the thunder, move aside the lightning, because it's Scooter Rosa in the building. I wish I could have half my face painted, but y'all get the gist. Mm. What's up, indeed, everybody? Indeed. And you know who else gets the gist? The ladies of the IWC, because they just don't get the gist. They also get the heartthrob of said community. I'm only, of course, talking about Mr. Yeager Bombastic. So fantastic. Ooh. I swear, if AEW treated the ladies the same way on Dynamite that they treated them on Dark, he would keep coming back to back to back to praise said women's division on AEW Dynamite. Yeah, good bombastic. I mean, on the other hand, Thunder Rosa, though. Thunder, Thunder Rosa, Rosa, though. There's two people in particular that Paul White, a.k.a. or F.K.A. Big Show, really loves when he's commentating on it, on Elevation. One of them being on Helico. <laughs> well, unfortunately, you know how I feel about him. I mean, he just likes the whole comes out dancing, like follows his own wind. So, like right. that's that's his catchphrase when he's just catching the wind. You know, he's just following his own breeze. Blah blah blah. But uh, the other one, and he just loves saying the name. And I'm gonna try my best to um, do a little impersonation of it. Thunder Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, got all the attitude, got all the fire. And you know what? Dark and Elevation were in Texas. And man, did, oh, man, did she get some pop. I oh, bet. absolutely. I mean, she does live in San Antonio, so. She does indeed. So Good a three-hour trip from here, you know. Hey, hopefully we see her. Hopefully. 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 But. Now, of course, with all the AEW mm. news going on, which, of course, we already know this. It's if you don't know, that's a sad thing because it's every fucking where AEW is, is, is at the forefront of all the professional wrestling news. Now, Scoot, do you have anything that people may not know about yet? Or is this pretty no. much one of those things where they just it's it's it is what it is? It is what it is, but I do pose an interesting question of do y'all want to discuss this now or do y'all want to save it for a hot tag? And the question is, well, I ain't say too much the question, but this topic is AEW can't lose sight of his homegrown stars in favor of Punk and Daniel Bryan or Bryan Ooh. Danielson. Uh, you know what? I think we can talk about that now, because mainly, and I'm, gl I'm glad, I'm so, glad you brought that up. Um, so let me let me preface it with people. If okay. you don't know exactly what this conversation means, uh, we can reference TNA. Okay. TNA had a bunch of home homegrown talent. Of course, the main one being AJ Styles. Yes. But what started to happen was a lot of ex WWE people were going to TNA. We're talking about Kurt Angle, Booker T, Kevin Nash, Christian Cage, Rhino, mm -hmm. uh, Tyson Tomko, uh, Gail Kim. Oh man, that's the name I have. Mickey heard in a James. While. Um. Uh, who else? There's a lot of people who maybe even had small stints. But what started to happen, oh, Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, how can I forget, Mick mm -hmm. Foley. Um, but what was happening, Scott Steiner, 
<laughs> and I keep talking about it, I keep listening to more people. But right. what was happening was all of these people were coming in and their homegrown talent like AJ Styles and Kazarian, Christopher Daniels, Motor City Machine Guns, uh, Beer Money, they were all slowly getting pushed down. And that's what kind of tanked Impact or TNA for a while. Many mm -hmm. people... Many people don't want this to happen with uh, AEW. Is it a chance this could happen in AEW? Well, especially, the, the especially with Punk and Danielson coming in. The short answer is yes, it could happen. Okay. But the, uh, the long answer that I'm going to give is for me, it's no. Um, and that's mainly because of what AEW is doing and has been doing for a while, because they've been alluding to, you know, extending that olive branch to all these other brands and promotions to mm. what, what, because, because the key, the, the token phrase with, with AEW this week was forbidden door. Yes. The reason why this won't get the same treatment that TNA got back in the day is because not everybody is designated to just one promotion. Everybody's able to branch out and go find success wherever they're able to. And I think that's 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 an amazing thing, especially when you when you take into account <clears throat> New Japan. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you 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 can say Impact all day, and that's cool because they're they're basically like next door. But with New Japan, with the roster that they have and the the amount of titles that they have. There's room for a lot of people within New Japan. So for me, with this situation, and I think Moxley may be the, the blueprint on all of this because of the way that they that they built him as AEW champion, as you know, with, with him having the you know United States championship for um for New Japan, and the way they're still treating him even after losing both titles. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he is one of the, the, the prime people right now who has not lost steam and he's yeah. lost all his fucking titles yet. He's still very relevant in what he's doing. Like he's not there. There's no shortage of competitors or contenders for him in any mm -hmm. way, shape or form. And I think that's going to be the reflection moving forward with AEW with them bringing in, you know, a guy like punk, a guy like um, Brian Danielson um, because of the fact that again, Brian Danielson had already stated that he wants to go to New Japan. He wants to have matches yeah. there. And I don't see Brian Danielson being somebody who sticks solely to AEW. I think he'll come in, do a little stuff here and there, and then primarily be in New Japan and then go right back now. and forth. Yeah. Punk, I yeah. think he may be the one person that actually stays in AEW for a little bit, does some stuff here and there, but I think his primary base will be AEW. So – in what capacity that's going to be, I don't know, but I I really don't see them, you know, being a factor in pushing anybody else down because I think with Tony Khan, he's a mark like like the rest of us in terms of AEW mm -hmm. and professional wrestling. So I think he understands it the same way that we would, being uh, fans and being you know consumers of the product. You know, it's not a Vincent Man situation where it's like, oh, I want what I want. You know, damn everybody else, I want to watch this and enjoy it for myself. I think he's coming at it from a standpoint of if I was in their shoes, how would I look at this? Yeah. And right now he's giving everybody what they want. Everybody's been trying to get punk. He got punk. Everybody's been trying to figure out where Daniel Bryan's going to go. He got Daniel Bryan to come up there. It's as simple as that. And yeah, I think, yeah, th this, this is fantastic. And I'm glad that we're <clears throat> getting it at the time that we're getting it. Because again, just like I stated, I was skeptical about punk going anywhere after a certain mm -hmm. point. And now mm -hmm. they got me, they got me back to being intrigued and prepared for like everything that's about to happen within the next few weeks. So yeah, I, I yeah, I don't think it's gonna affect anybody. All right. So yeah, let me ask you this. Okay. Uh, what do you say to the people? We kind of touched on it before, but what do you say to the people that AEW is hiring a bunch of ex WWE guys and that there are too many 
WWE guys in AEW. What do you say to that? I got to say that to a degree, or at least throughout COVID or 2020, they may have been onto something. However, now it's it's not so much that they're cherry picking, but they are picking the right ex WWE guys. They're not just bringing in whoever. Like when we saw Mark Henry, we were like, okay, why? Like mm-hmm. even even if it is for him to be in the back and you know developing big man talent, mm-hmm. it's still like. When you make this huge announcement, oh, it's Mark Henry. It's like, <laughs> or, or, and the, to a lesser extent, but still like Christian Cage. Mm-hmm. Again, you're just like, initially, why? Now, I'm, I can look at these marks <laughs> or fans and tell them like, just, just shut up and enjoy the ride right now. Like they know what they're doing as far as who they're picking up and who they're going to be utilizing. <clears throat> um, especially with Brian Danielson, he's going to be he and Moxley. I feel like are going to be that that ultimate bridge for New Japan. I would love to see Danielson rock that U.S. title for a while. Maybe not to the extent of John Moxley's, but and I love how and we're going to talk about it later how Moxley even like kind of covers on that, Mm -hmm. but right now I'm, I'm, I got my popcorn bowl and I'm waiting to see what they do. (laughs) I, uh, like I'm, I'm I'm excited for this next shit, 60 days to see what's going to be going on and what develops from it. No. Yes. Okay. So let me ask both of y'all this. I even give my opinions. What Mm. do you think? AEW can do to not be the next impact or uh, WCW in this sense. I'll say first that they're already on the road to not being the next impact or or, uh, WCW because think about it like this impact mainly like, or they only source from like that one brand or from Mm -hmm. people that left the one brand WWE. AEW doesn't care. Like, I mean, they, of course, they are getting people from the town that they've partnered with, but AEW's going beyond just taking ex WWE guys. They're 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 getting guys like Nick Gage. They took Ethan Page. They took um, damn it, the name was right on my. Anyways, no, they, like for a short while they took Matt Cardona. They they they're they're getting guys from every facet of the wrestling industry. They're not just getting one person or these or X amount of people from one brand. Hi Loki. Yes. <laughs> yeah, do you have something to say? No. Okay. Um. No. Um. No, I mean that was pretty much my point. Now that he's kind of sidelined me. <laughs> I would oh. say personally, um, the one thing I have to look at it is for all of these people who keeps saying, you know, they're ex WWE guys or they're ex this guys. Let's just bring it to the world of sports for a second, just sports in general. If back in the nineties, if LeBron James, sorry, not Nick, sorry, if Michael Jordan. <laughs> would have left the Chicago Bulls, none of the other teams would have been like, no, he's a Bulls That's, guy. We exactly. That's an ex-Bulls guy. <laughs> All the other teams would have been ready to kill each other to sign Michael Jordan. Yeah, if sure. Kobe Bryant in the 2000s would have been like, you know what, I don't want to be a Laker. Nope, he's an ex-Laker. We don't want that guy. Hmm. You, know, you know, I'll even, I'll even cross industry it for you. Like, nobody – and this is this was relevant history in recent history. Um, nobody looked at Tom Brady. Ex- exactly. Oh no, that's an ex Patriots guy. Ex Patriot. Ugh, no, he has no he has no use for us anywhere. He's an ex Patriot. I mean, coach went, looked at him. Went to, him, so, coach went to Tampa, 
first yeah. season in Tampa got Girl. a ring. Yeah, show it all, you mother. Because because yes, Patriot fan here, Brady fan here. This guy, we know, me. we know, we yes. know, we know, we know. We I know. mean, know. I mean, let's let's just be fair. Patriots also picked up Cam Newton and went to shit. But anyway, hey, look, <laughs> hey, but things happen. So the thing is, is that, <clears throat> and and if we're really being honest with WCW at times, yes, the product went a little haywire. But WCW mainly went out of business because Turner Broadcasting got brought out by AOL. And AOL was like, we don't want wrestling anymore on our program. Yeah. That's the main reason why it was going out of business. So. And and now Turner Broadcasting got wrestling again. And then, and, and then to even put it more in perspective, when somebody gets terminated or leave a company, do you expect them not to be a wrestler anymore? Exactly. True. Like they gotta wrestle somewhere else. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so it's not like, oh well, hey, the biggest company in the world fired me. I guess I can never wrestle again, guys. Hey, like, time to go <clears throat> do something else. It's like some no. of these fans don't realize these wrestlers, you know, have lives and they need to make money. Yeah. So well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, I mean, and look, and I, I don't want them to get anything wrong. I mean, yeah, we've definitely come on here and we said we've had our reservations that we, you know, we didn't want AEW to become, you know, WCW yeah. or TNA 2.0 because I of, you know, who they're bringing in. But at the same time, we, <clears throat> we objectively can look at a situation and say, okay, you know what? I see what they're doing. And I'm going to piggyback off of what you said, Jaeger. And it's the fact that not, you know, they are bringing in people from different parts of the independent scene as well. You know, case in point, Nick Gage, you know, do you, you, you think you think WWE would have brought in Nick Gage? You think T, TNA or Impact right, probably wouldn't have brought in Nick Gage because they, they look at that as, oh, it's some, you know, some 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 hole in the wall, you know, in, in ballrooms and bars and shit like that. You know, we don't want we, we 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 don't do that over here, you know. But to come to for, for AEW to experiment and say, you know what, we're gonna showcase this because yeah, you may like professional wrestling, but you don't realize that you may like this over here. And that's that goes that goes to show, especially with the whole WCW and WWF thing at the time when ECW was on the outskirts and barely mm-hmm. anybody knew about that. But of course, you know, like myself, when I when when I was turned on to ECW, I was like, oh shit, what the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And started yeah. watching, became a fan, you know. But they weren't showcasing it on WWE. They weren't showcasing it on on WCW. You know, we happen to see a few stars here and there, but they weren't broadcasting it like AEW. Was AEW said, you know what? Hey, we're gonna bring Nick Gage in. You know, we'll we'll get to that match later on. But we're and we're gonna showcase what he does best. We're not going to put him in the AEW style and make him wrestle this type of match. We're going to give him and showcase him at his best so that way you can see him at his best rather than what WWE does. They bring somebody in from the indies because of what they did on the indies and then water them down to do something that they want them to do rather than what they brought them over for. Uh Keith Lee, Ricochet, Morrison, so on, so on, and so on. and so Drew, Fucking McIntyre, who was Drew Galloway at the time, but they let him go and then brought him back after what he did on the Indies. So mm-hmm. it, it, it's just AEW will be perfectly fine with what they're mm-hmm. doing because they have their finger on the pulse, just like Triple H does, and they understand what the fans want and what they're willing to show the fans because they're willing to take risk. And I think that's the main thing is that and they're willing to take risk. At, at this point, it's you would have it would have to be the most blatant thing granted what tna did with aj styles was pretty blatant but yeah. it would be blatant for them to start ignoring jungle boy darby mm-hmm. allen hangman and a few boy and, and a few others because mm-hmm. since they're technically the homegrown talent it'll Scorpio be sky Scorpio sky it'll be the most blatant act of we're we're worrying about the shiny new toys rather than the old toys. 
the fans are completely with these with those four gentlemen we said it'll be pretty blatant for them to just ignore them completely and and, you know play with the shiny new toys and they've done it. far from ignore them. Let's see. Jungle Boy is the first AEW competitor to get over 50 wins. He's mm-hmm. out at uh, 52 as of this week. Uh, Darby Allen is constantly on TV. Scorpio and he's paired with Sting. Matt, yes. You know what? Legendary, <laughs> iconic Sting. He's paired okay. with Scorpio I, I was, I was a, Oh, go ahead. I was about to bring that up, and I'm glad I'm glad you said it, Scoot, because if you if you think if you think about all the guys who are from WWE, Mox, Cody, Sting, um, Christian Cage, Taz. Well, I, I don't want to throw Sting in that because Sting only just had that. Stand. The, well, the the the, the reason right. I'm throwing him in there is because is because of who they brought over because okay. they brought over other people, and you think about all these guys has been brought over. And who they were paired with. Darby's paired with with Sting right now, but he was also paired with Mox previously. Yep. yep. The same thing with Hobbs. Hobbs is now paired with Taz, who Ricky Starks is also paired with Taz. Jungle Boy is paired with Christian right now. You mm-hmm. Jericho. They paired MJF with Jericho out and as well as Sammy Guevara, Proud and Powerful. Well, Jake Hager by you know by proxy. But mm-hmm. and that and, and and now you take all that and you think about who's in the top title picture right now, the main fucking title, Kenny Omega, Hangman Page, the Elite, Bucks. Dark Order. None of those guys are from WWE. <clears throat> so mm-hmm. I mean, outside of you know Gallows I mean, Anderson, Miro. but they don't really count. So no. the only thing you can that, say is a WWE guy is Miro, but yeah. Miro is killing it. And he was paired with Kip in the beginning. <clears throat> so uh, it's like, yeah, they're bringing these guys over, but they haven't forgotten what they're building to with the future. Because all, mm-hmm. all their all their future talent that they're building the 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 uh, the foundation of this company on are paired with the guys that have already established themselves in other promotions. So they're not taken away, they're just helping build the future. Yep. It's and, like uh, it, it's it's funny how people are getting mad about this, but it's like you you get to to use your phrase, you like they, you get the shiny new toy. What do you expect them to do with the shiny new toy once they announce that they have said shiny new toy? You expect them to put them on the shelf or put them on like, darker elevation for a little bit, like Vince would do, like kill all their momentum from debuting. <laughs> I mean, to like just- you expect them to go in a two minute loss. To Jeff Hardy? To just, to just say it, even though it's going to come up later, Darby Allen sent a very specific <clears throat> message to oh, yes. one of the shiny new toys, apparently, that are signing with the company. So, obviously, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. I just think, yeah. honestly, I know, what it, I know what it's coming from. I think what it's coming from with a lot of people personally it's the we're finally getting something different than WWE, mm-hmm. and we don't want them to fail because we want something different. So we're going to point out all the things that y'all should not do. And it's like AEW has only been around what three years? Yeah, four, three, four, whatever. About, about yeah, about three if you count like, all the yeah before. But like, you got to kind of let it. Let it happen. Like you gotta let them. Like I understand we finally have alternatives to WWE. Mm-hmm. We get that. You gotta let AEW make their mistakes too. They have to. Yeah. They have to themselves have their own growing pains. They yeah. themselves have to make mistakes of maybe we shouldn't assign this person or maybe you know <laughs> this didn't work out the way it thought. They have to. Do these things. And with all of these sites and journalists and whatever want to point out all the little things AEW does wrong, it's like y'all are going to make them become self-conscious of their own self. You know, you just 
I think it's like also polarizingly these fans that are just used to watching WWE for years, just years of Mm -hmm. only knowing one brand. And then Mm -hmm. here comes another brand that starts breaking the mold from what WWE does. Damn, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. And not to interrupt you, but here it goes. WWE has been so poorly booked from a traditional wrestling standpoint for so long that there's an entire generation of adult WWE fans who don't understand why it's bad because it's all they know. Don't bother debating them. You are talking right past each other. Yeah, it's uh, what a what a news uh, YouTuber. Shout out to Kyle Kalinske. It's what you label as TFGs or too far gone. Mm, there's, I like there's, that TFG. There's, yeah, I like that. There's, they're just there's like you just said. There's no point in debating them because they are set in their way of accepting the crap they are fed. But Which, to them, they don't know it's crap. That's exactly. Crazy. That's what I'm saying. They're, that's why they're too far gone. They don't yeah. know the shit in front of their face when they've got like a nice delicious sandwich over here. Hmm. Yeah. And that, that, that makes sense. And, it, and, uh, and you know what? I'm glad that you had sent that to us, uh, Scoot, before. Yeah. Because... That opened my eyes when I heard it because mm-hmm. when when I when I thought about it, I was like, you know what? That's absolutely right. And we're and we and we've sit here and we we've sat and we've talked. A lot of people are like, you know, hey, you know, what the fuck is wrong with you? But again, if they don't know any better, <laughs> we can't really get mad at everybody who follows WWE and that all and that also makes sense because for so long they were the the the, the big dog, which they still technically are the big dog in professional wrestling because. Mm-hmm. And even even when we were growing up, that was like the place to go. Like if you wanted like headlining a WrestleMania was like the dream for every professional wrestler at that time. You know, regardless of of, of where they were, they knew that they wanted to make it to WWE to be on a WrestleMania card. It was almost like a professional wrestler's bucket list, you know. So them being at the forefront. And you know, probably to a lot of them, it still is. Yeah. and 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 I would agree that. Absolutely. Um unfortunately, you know, for a lot of us, we have to deal with that because everybody knows that WWE is a well, not everybody, but people in, in our age range and, and and higher would uh would probably say, you know, yeah, we get it, but because WWE is so bad, it's like it's hard to look at that as like a bucket list item because of how bad they've been for so long. Mm-hmm. Um to the point where it's like, why would you even want to go there? Because you're going to have to deal with a lot of shit before you even get to WrestleMania. And even then, you're still not guaranteed a spot on there because of how poorly booked they are. Mm-hmm. So, but, 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 but yeah, man, I just. You know, I, WrestleMania used to be a thing that me and my friends would get a get all excited for like as soon as January comes around Royal rumbles in the, in the talks and you're just like, Shit, man, who's gonna win Royal Rumble? Like, oh my god, like what's what are we setting up for WrestleMania? Like what like what's going on here? And then it slowly becomes more predictable. Mm-hmm. And then it slowly gets to a point where you're like, Yeah, I'm gonna watch WrestleMania because that's when the stars actually like go all out mm-hmm. and give you those those matches that you've been like dying to see. But when you've seen Charlotte versus insert name here for the 15th time prior to their WrestleMania match. It's, it's not as overwhelming as it's, as it should be anymore. It's not exciting anymore. And And I'll say, I'll just say like my final, like WrestleMania match to where I, was just truly like, excited for and then ultimately let down on was Charlotte versus Oscar. Like, I you saw know, that. I and... will say this. Mm. I agree with you on that. The only thing that saved it for me. Yeah. Kofi versus Kofi versus Daniel two years ago. Mm. Okay. If Kofi, if Kofi and Daniel didn't happen two years ago, 
And I would even say Bianca and Sasha, even though we knew was Bianca amazing. was going to win that. Yeah. I mean, it, it was, it was, it, and see, that's the one thing, you know, to kind of parallel the booking conversation with this. Mm. AEW's case, AEW would be fine because we don't know where the fuck they go with that booking sometimes. Yeah. We yeah. sit here and do our predictions and we genuinely don't be knowing. Like some some matches do be clear. Yeah. Some matches do are clear. A lot of matches be like, like for instance, the opening match of Fight for the Fallen. We will discuss yeah. that. But um AEW will always be okay because they're gonna keep doing stuff fresh. When mm-hmm. was the last time somebody in WWE told another wrestler, okay, you want to fight me for my title so bad? I got five challenges for you. If you can do the five challenges, then you can fight me. You know what tends to happen in WWE? Oh, they just won this random triple threat match. No, I not. got another title shot. Or yeah. or they or they pin said champion in a tag match. Or are they, they pin said champion, champion in a regular match? Yeah, it's just Oh, oh, I didn't tell y'all. WWE started doing their whole championship eliminator type things too. Yeah, that that's that's what uh Nikki and uh Charlotte, <laughs> yeah. right? They they they've been doing it with the women's tag team title stuff too. They've been calling them eliminator matches. So at least they're trying to borrow something from AEW, I guess. You're right. <laughs> but AEW be fine. Like, y'all got any last thoughts on that whole them ignoring the talent or potentially ignoring the homegrown talent? Nah, I, I mean, I pretty much got got out what I needed to get out on that, and I think it it, it it's it's gonna stand true throughout the years as well. Because again, AEW just they they know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. I can agree, okay. Jaeger. With the exception of certain spots like Jericho going through foam, I guess, or, uh, uh, or, uh, faulty explosives (laughs) for a bar, a barbed wire death match. Um, yeah, no, AEW's on it. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm down with it. And look, if that's the one thing we got to complain about on on AEW, I'm perfectly fine. Just fix it though. Just fix that shit though. AEW. Uh, but with that, yeah, let's uh, let, let's 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 get into fight for the fallen. Um, yeah, the fallen. Opened up with, uh, with with going back to forum members of the elite starting off AEW or former members of the elite starting off AEW. You know, I, again, like they they started off the right way. They made this shit feel like it was a pay per view event. Mm-hmm. You know, especially with the entrances one. With with Hangman in the Dark Order, which they announced uh, as Hangman Page in the Dark Order, but on the graphic, it said the Dark Order. Mm-hmm. So they're 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 really playing with their with with their actions and their wording. They they're, they're they're alluding from it, but yet Hangman did come out in Dark Order colors as well. Mm-hmm. BTE actually slight like not even spoiled, but minorly gave away. Because Dark Order snuck in a a little promo video um, of them all hanging out, but they're like, "Hey man, we got a bit." They're they're talking to Hangman, and they're saying, mm-hmm. "Hey, we got the big match coming up. We got you something special." And mm-hmm. that something special was his gear that he oh, rocked nice. to the event. Okay, interesting. Okay. Well. I, I love I love this entrance from them. It um that little vignette to kick it off. Yeah, right. that vignette yeah. was special. It um it made them feel like superstars. Um, oh yeah. Once again, if I was a betting man, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I'd be it. Mm. And if I, I, I kind of I kind of have to take back what I said uh, about the Dark Order like becoming stagnant or stale because I said if they didn't do anything different whether it be like bringing Darby Allen in or, you know, something to change their dynamic or make them heels, that they were going to end up losing a lot of the fans. And with this hangman thing, they stuck through it. And now I'm like, you know what? They're going to be fine. Oh, yeah. Um, so I take back what I said. I was wrong. I was definitely wrong at the, in this situation because 
they they found a way to make them fan favorites and make it mm-hmm. stay completely relevant and fresh throughout this whole thing. And I'm, and I'm glad that it took Kenny and the Elite to make them feel uh, larger in this aspect. And of course, with the Elite, they had their entrance. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not mad at it. At first, I giggled about this when it first happened. I was like, what the fuck? Right. I was like, here, here we go doing this fucking hill shit. And they, of course, they took it there. Here, Here's the thing. And this is why I, I, I brought up when we talked about NXT. The idea of entertainment. And they're not making a mockery of, you know, anything. Because uh-huh. they, 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 they did their thing. You know, they, they look at Dark Order as jokes, so they're treating this shit as a fucking joke. So they're having yeah. their fun with it. And yeah. that's some yeah. that that's some hill tactics. And to come out doing relevant shit, call themselves the elite squad, you know, or mm-hmm. shout out to the Toon Squad and the in the mm-hmm. space. Uh and but they're they're specifically doing it for Space Jam one because Kenny yeah. at the numbers twenty three, mm-hmm. Michael Jordan. So I thought that I thought that was a little funny. But um, I but then, did. There was a small takeaway from this, or something that took it away from me. Is oh yeah, Excalibur count calls it out. Like oh, by the way, uh, like Space Jam, a new like whatever the hell the new Space Jam is called. Mm-hmm. He like he gets he gives a quick promo to that as they're coming to the ring. Like oh yeah, by the way, in theaters and on HBO now or whatever. So I was just like, is this like was this them like doing a plug for this fucking movie? Like, despite the fact that they came out in OG Space Jam, way. Yeah. I mean, they did do a plug for Godzilla and King Kong, so that's true. They, they definitely did. Well, hey, uh, fuck it. I guess that that's gonna be their thing now. <laughs> truth. Um. The, yeah, the, this this match. Um. <sighs> Like it, everybody in Dark Order is so fucking talented. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, shout out to Stu Grayson because yeah. he, oh he to me God. he he was always a standout. Like even even before you know Johnny Hungy came into the play, Stu Grayson was always a standout in the Dark Order. Like just the way he held himself, his demeanor, everything. Mm-hmm. I, I I like his whole aesthetic. Like even when he's not in his wrestling gear, he had the, you know the um. I forgot what kind of fucking jacket that is, but I fucking love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But just just that whole deal, and the fact that he's he's not just a one dimensional like technical wrestler, he can he can high fly, he can do all, he can just do all that shit, and I like that. Um, I was worried for I was worried about him for a second, because when when he when he did that corkscrew over the top rope onto everybody, Ooh, yeah. he smacked the back of oh his head yeah. hard as fuck. Yeah. So and and shout out and. and just kudos to him for even like rebounding off of that and then doing the whole thing with um with uh gallows into mm-hmm. the into the crowd and then them being counted out, which I thought that was a very creative way to get them out of mm-hmm. the situation that happens by taking another pin. Um and then you had Johnny Hungy, but you had you had Johnny Hungy and um and Hangman as the last two, which I thought right. that was a that was a well, you, yeah, you had you had. I want to um, get the shout out to what's it Stu again who did that superplex from from the turnbuckle with Nick into the mm. crowd. Mm. Because I mean, regardless if you have eight people catching you too, that's still mm. a hell of a yeah. move. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The fan ra- the fan pop from that, the good old holy shits were were flying everywhere. Yeah, um, yeah, because uh, Gallows got got conked on the head oh, from, yeah. from that also. <laughs> but um, but yeah, and then evil. It was, Uno really, had... it was really two things that bothered me, but we was getting towards it when it became okay. the two on three. I just mm. wish, uh, I just wish uh, Matt would have made. I mean, sorry, Nick would have made that dunk. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wish he would have got that dunk off. For but nonetheless, there was a setup for the Meltzer driver, or 
the indie taker. Yeah, the indie taker. Yeah, the indie taker on on the floor. And Matt was holding who was it? Was it hung Johnny? Yeah, it was Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. Matt was holding Johnny. And Nick gets up on the rope and for some reason throws the ball away. Like they gave him a basketball. They set up a whole hoop and everything. Mm-hmm. And I thought Nick was about to just like snatch the ball as he's flipping and then Me do too. a straight up dunk. Thought, yeah. And <laughs> he, then he just throws the ball away. I don't know if he's doing that as a troll to the fans. Like, yeah, you thought. And, I don't know, but, but oh then he goes and proceeds to dunk the imaginary ball. No, right he, um, he, he, he threw the ball, but Kenny threw it back to him. As yeah. to go for like, um, Alley oop, but when he grabbed it and slammed it down, it hit the rim and then bounced away. Oh, is that but, what it was? Yeah, but what he did after that was funny because he went to grab the ball again and then jumped and then slammed it into the into the hoop. He and did then do that. said he was like and he went to camera like that was what was supposed to happen right there. That's how it was supposed to happen. Yeah. And I was like, this motherfucker here. <laughs> and then Goddamn I love like, the me. crowd immediately after. You still missed. You yeah, right. Still missed. <laughs> But um, but yeah, and, and and a good shout out to Evil Uno because he got taken out by Kenny, so yeah. they made they still made him look strong mm-hmm. by by being taken out by the AEW champion. Um, and then of course, of course, we get back to the uh the, the two the two on three Young Bucks and Kenny OG Elite against uh, Johnny Hungy and Hangman, and Boy, they had to hit Johnny with all the moves. They did. Johnny was hit with everything. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna fast forward to to the end of this because, of course, you know, Hangman against you know, Bucks and Kenny. It um, they did they did a lot of things within this whole deal. Like they did the call back to you know Matt grabbing Hangman's leg, just like Hangman grabbed Matt's leg mm-hmm. back in that previous tag match that they had. Um. I believe it was against FTR. Yeah, it was it with was. FTR. Um, and, you know, them just putting them, them those little nuggets here and there. And at the end, Kenny puts him up for the uh, the one wing angel. And, and of course, we've all said that Hangman is going to be the one to kick out of this. And I, I was I was gripping my seat like, wait, wait, don't let him kick out now. Like, not, no, this yeah, is yeah, all. Yeah. Not now, not now, not now. During the match. <laughs> um, but the surprising, you see, it would have been surprising on all accounts because even the loss that he took was surprising because I had in my mind, just like we came and talked on here about that he was going to win. They were going to win this mm-hmm. match. He was going to get his title shot. And then members of Dark Order were going to get their tag team title shots. So yeah. it was like, damn, he just lost. So what What do they do now? Where do they go from here? Because Heyman is still ranked number one. So he still owed a championship match regardless. But, mm-hmm. you know, how are they going to play this? According to commentary, they said Hangman just has to fall out of the top five. Huh. So maybe he just keeps on winning and then gets his eventual match again. So um, th- this is the way that, that, that they stretch it out until um, all out. Maybe not so much all out or... I mean, it could be all out if they want to do that within the next, what, six weeks? Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> um, I'll admit that I was slightly spoiled, or at least it was open to my imagination to be spoiled mm-hmm. from watching Elevation and Dark because there were two specific promos cut, one by Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss saying, <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> he was Joey saying you were wrong. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, no, but one was Joey Janelle and Sonny Kiss um, saying how they're coming, how they're going to start winning up the ranks and coming for the Bucks and their title. I thought oh. they broke up. They did, and <laughs> then Joey Janela said, "I'm going to change my ways, this and that," and Sonny, I guess, forgave him, and now they're back at it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then on Dark, 
Varsity Blondes have been feuding with uh, the Acclaimed okay. because because uh, Max Caster has been dropping some some fucking heat during his uh, entrance towards uh, one. Uh, what's her name again? Julia uh, Hart. Julia Hart. Julia Hart. Talking about one of them was and this that actually made me laugh. It was a uh, talking about how apparently the vars the. Varsity Blondes are actually uh, Eiffel Towering Julia Hart. Oh, wow. my God. And then the next week, they actually came out with a baguette. <laughs> oh, my God. And what was it? Uh, Anthony Bowens then was like, hey, we said something offensive about the Varsity Blondes trip to Paris last week. And we just want you to know from the bottom of our hearts that we don't give a shit. <laughs> but then uh, this week, Varsity Blondes with Dante Martin took on a W from them. Mm. And a little annoyed that they didn't give Dante Martin any credit because he's the one that secured the victory for them. But they cut the promo anyway, talking about how they're going to be moving up to the top. And how they're going to be trying to take on for the tag team titles. I like and this. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, wait, if you're talking about fighting the Bucks, but the but the Bucks are possibly going to be fighting the Dark Order or Stu and Great and Uno. Ah, crap. <laughs> uh, uh, see, again, AEW knows what they're doing. Like yeah. with with their extra shows. I mean, granted, it's like I said before. Their women's division suffers on dynamite, but everything else in the women's division works well on the other yes, shows. Yes, we know you <laughs> agree. Stop it. <laughs> um, but um, but of course, Hangman and Dark Order lose, and yeah. now the elite stand on top. They and of course they all they they have. All they're they're all draped in gold, so yeah, kudos to that. But um, we go we go from a highlight starting off to uh, my personal opinion on this. I I did not care too much for Ricky Starks championship celebration. It was it was pretty mild. Yeah. yeah I, um. Now, of course, I, I I like when when Starks got on, you know, the mic, started talking. Oh yeah. That was cool. As it's far as the mic, pulling young rock vibes. Yeah, I, I got I got the, I got the same got the same vibe from that. Um, I I, did, I didn't care for the band playing. I didn't care for for nice. Brian Cage coming out. He's from Louisiana, so I understood the band. Yeah, say, say, yeah, I understood that too. I just it wasn't the band, the band didn't hit hard for me, man. It wasn't so much about Brian Cage coming out; it's just the way he did it. Like, why, why, why cut, why throw out your music? Why not run in from the from the fans? Why not do like a, a number of things instead of just coming out with your music and then yeah. laying out a couple of band members? <laughs> On, on top of that, I, ha I have an issue with, with, with a lot of um, guys coming out. Like, if they're not wrestling on the show, why are you in wrestling gear? That's a great question. Like, it's just, it's, it, just it, 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 it takes me out. Because I'm like, last week, you, gave, you, you, had, you had an interview. And you were in pretty much regular clothes. You didn't have a match that night. Then you come in here and say, "Hey, I'm 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 a I'm a crash I'm a crash this party." So you knew you were gonna crash a party. So you got dressed in your wrestling gear to go to said party. I like it just it do, it doesn't compute half the time, and I just don't understand how was, a lot of people do that. I think it was more so to debut his new entrance and ring gear. He should have did that in a match with uh with Starks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But you know, I yeah, th this didn't hit hard for me at all. I, I didn't care too much for it. You know, again, I'm glad Starks has a championship. Yes, I'm glad, great. glad they're doing something with the FTW title. 
But uh, with this, yeah, this, this, this wasn't it. I'm glad they gave a shout out to Hobbs, saying he he wasn't there, you know. But yeah, oh no, that that was the thing. I think that's the only interesting thing that they that they said was that Hobbs was out recruiting. Mm. That's the one thing that stood out for me in this. Um, because now I'm like, okay, so Taz, Team Taz is still trying to expand or rather replace, you know, what they lost. So well, that's, what Taz always, that's what Taz always says whenever um, whenever he's on commentary for Dark. He's like, you know, Team Taz, we're always recruiting. Yeah, I'm like, you got the same four guys for like a year now. Well, now it's down to three. <laughs> so True. I don't, you, know, you never really see any active recruiting. So I was glad that they touched up on that as well. Yeah. Um but we go we go from that to a uh a nice little little promo from from friend of the show, Britt Baker, Dr. Britt Baker, D M D. And she also had, had, had some interesting things to say. One, she addressed the fact that she continues to get hurt, but um she also addressed the fact that she beat Nyla Rose. She made Nyla Rose tap. With a broken wrist, little, little Kurt Angle vibes, you know. One with a broken freaking neck, one with a broken freaking wrist, and um, she also alluded to maybe her having a new acquisition to uh to to the DMD family because she stated that you know with everything going on, with everybody gunning for her, Reba can't do all the <clears> protecting <throat> because you know she's hurt. So maybe legitimately now. Yeah, I, absolutely. So now maybe she needs to outsource and get some uh, some muscle, so to speak. So now it's a question of, is she going to do that? And if so, who that could possibly be? You know? No. Yeah. Um, that's uh, that's interesting. I, I, I look forward to seeing how that's going to unfold. Um, I know that she's probably going to end up being on TV more so now in promos like she did when she hurt her knee. Oh, she's got um, Pittsburgh coming up. I mean, Pittsburgh coming up. Pittsburgh, yes. Um, yeah, I don't. When, wait, when is that? I think that's before the Houston show, or wow, so that's immediately just after. In a couple weeks. Yeah. So yeah, that I don't. I don't see her being well by that time. Um, I, so I guess she just may have one hell of a a promo or just showing. I know she probably wanted to wrestle on that show, but maybe a little. I mean, oh, she can. Yeah, she'll definitely show up. Like, there's no way she won't be there. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, they they they, they they've been pushing that for weeks with the whole Britsburg thing. Oh so. yeah, they yeah they definitely they they got to do something. It's also special for the them. same week as Rampage's debut. Oh yeah, so that's uh, August 11th and 13th. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the week before the Houston show. That'll be interesting. Which, hey, they finally announced the Houston show this week. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody's been waiting for, you know, since before. Well, I think, yeah, it was like early last year when it was supposed it to was happen. It was supposed to be April of last year. Then they pushed it to November because they didn't think every, you know, thought everything may have been cleared up. And then they just completely just indefinitely it postponed be, it. Then it was supposed to be June. And then they pushed it to August. Yeah, just... Crazy, crazy, but it's okay. They're 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 coming here now. Which, by the here. way, if you already have your physical tickets, and they say April or whenever, just show them to the door, and they will let you in. There you go. There you go. Simple as that. And you got that. You got that tidbit from ye old Jaeger over here. Yeah. You should thank him. Because you, you know I'm gonna be you. there. That's right. Um, but of course, going from Ricky Stars and Team Taz to, of course, a highlight from Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. We get we get a double edged sword of a tag match because damn, this tag match was good and it got taken away from us abruptly. Yeah, and it, it's it's fu- it's funny how how fate and the universe works because it's like we know you want this tag match, and we're I gonna give it to you. Blitzed. 
but <laughs> until until I saw everybody else was like, you know, they took it away from us too. So I was like, okay, so I wasn't the only one. Yeah, no, they uh yeah, I was I was all about I, I was glued to this match because I'm just like I yeah. know I, I knew I wanted this match because of the build to it. But once we got it, I was like, I didn't realize what I was getting when I got this match. And I, we like AEW has been sitting on some fucking like gold nuggets because Proud and Powerful has been there the entire time. And I just feel like they haven't even shown what they're capable of. In mm-hmm. AEW. Oh no. And with this match, it's just like the fuck, man. Like I I, I feel like I've been disserviced since the inception <laughs> of the inner circle because I felt like <laughs> we should we should have gotten a shitload more from Sammy Guevara. I felt like we should have yep. a shitload more from Santana and Ortiz. And I felt like Jericho was like, nah, I'm gonna just pepper a little here and there. We're not gonna give you everything. We're gonna give you just a little bit. But at the same time, I feel that because of what happened with COVID and everything and with the fans being gone, I think Jericho was like, I'm not going to waste y'all on no attendance. I'm going to wait for fans to get in attendance, and then we're going to recap and then do everything we're supposed to do when they get there. And I feel like that's what happened here because Proud and Powerful should have definitely been tag team champs by now. Yeah, yeah. And with the way this match was fucking going, I don't even, I don't even, well, I, I, guess, I guess FTR was supposed to win. I don't think that they should have. I think that Proud and Powerful should have came with a W so that way they can go after the Bucks and then take those titles. Or they may just end up, no, I, for, I forgot what I said last week because I know I said one iteration of them leave, them going from here and then taking the titles and then probably, oh, no, I think I said they were going to win and then go for the titles and have FTR beat them for the titles. Yeah. But so what happened with uh, Cash? He, he, I guess he cut himself because after the match, because um, one, when, when, when Dax had pinned um, Ortiz off a of brain buster, I was like, the fuck? That didn't make any sense. Um, then the camera cut to, uh, to Cash down with the, uh, with, at ringside mm-hmm. with a lot of blood around him and then him holding his arm. So and then they had they had a report saying that he got he got some some weird laceration. They don't they didn't say from what though. Mm. Okay. But they did say it was it was pretty bad. So so who who the who the fuck knows? I I just know that I, I felt like we were robbed though. Yeah. Robbed. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, but I I I'm I'm not I'm I'm happy and I'm mad at the same time. But I'm more happy because we got we got a t- we got a taste of something that is going to be fucking amazing when it happens again. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, I just g- g- give give me more of FTR in the fucking ring as a tag team. Like just yes. just keep oh, keep 100%. getting me there. Um, and, and and more and more proud and powerful, more proud and powerful all, all, all day, and more and more Santana promos. Yes. Period. <laughs> but, but yeah, F- FTR go over um, shortly, shorter than expected, because I'm pretty sure they had they probably had another ten minutes of this match to go, and I would have loved it. But um, but we get we get we go we go from there, and then we get a, a blatant, a very blatant tease for Punk because not only did they announce that the the second airing of Rampage was going to be in Chicago. Mm-hmm. But then Darby had a nice little promo. And it, it's 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 funny how he had brought it up, you know, saying mm-hmm. how, how AEW was was a place to showcase if you, you know you know whether you're going to be great or not, but then he also that the little tidbit, the 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 blatant just hey, guess what? This motherfucker is signed. If you didn't already know, is said yeah. Even if you're if even if you claim that you're the best in the world, world. 
So with that being said, do y'all really think Shaman Man is gonna show up? Oh no. That, I'm just saying. That's a that that that's 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 I mean, that's a good one. I swear to God, if I, I mean, hear here comes the money. <laughs> so I swear to God, if I hear here comes the money instead of it's clobbering time. What 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 I need? I need to see. I'm glad. I'm glad because I need I need Excalibur. Once once cult of personality hits, I need Excalibur to say, "Well, here comes the money." Oh. <laughs> I just need That'd him to say nice. that. That would be nice. Because that that'll be a nice little just at <laughs> at WWE for that bullshit. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah um. This was this, and I'm, uh, this was more to the point of what we were talking about earlier, where they're they're bringing they're bringing Punk and 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 uh, Danielson in, and they're putting them in positions like they they're already setting them up before they even show up, and yep. with Punk and Darby, I wouldn't have expected that to be. I would have expected more Malachi Black and Darby Allen just because you see them within the same mm-hmm. realm, but. You know, Punk and Darby Allen, you wouldn't expect it, but it's a fresh matchup that they're that potentially they're giving you, if that's if that's where they're going. But yeah, I'm I if that's the case, I'm all for it. Um, I guess they're not gonna address the fact that, you know, Darby seemed like he was mad at Sting when Sting was doing the shit with Orange Cassidy. Mm-hmm. But you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if if Ollie Davis doesn't want to say it, uh, I'll, I'll I'll say it for him because he, he's 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 playing coy with it and he's trying not to say it, but I'll say it right now. CM Punk to AW confirmed. <laughs> oh shit! Um, yeah. Shout now out, the shout question out, shout is out question is where he shows up. Is it going to be on that rampage in Chicago? Is he going to be at All Out? Is it going to be? At uh, Dynamite in Chicago, like they've got, they've got a few spots that they. I can think throw he's gonna show up at that rampage since it's the second one. I and think then they up. made such a huge announcement for it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think yeah, I think they want to continue to get eyes on the product. So I mean, if that look that that's a money way to do it. Yeah, you know, you want ratings on a Friday. Especially there you go. On a Friday. So, I don't know what time it's going to air because I mean, you know, Tony Khan said he did, he did after, so it's still that he's, yeah. he's still pulling that shit. Okay, I think well, so. Yeah. If, so if you, nine if you to ten ratings, for the one hour show. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you want ratings from nine to ten on a fucking Friday night, CM Punk is going to do it for you, or the or or the idea of CM Punk being there is going to do it for you. True. So, yeah. Um, Wait, so wait, when is, uh, uh, fuck, wait, what, what, what other shows in, in Chicago? Is it all out? All mm-hmm. out is sold out. Um, Dynamite is doing a show. I'm not sure if it's before or after. Hmm. When is all out? September uh, 6th or something like that? Oh yeah, fuck. September fifth. Yeah. Damn. No, it's soon, man. Yeah. Yeah, but that that rampage show is in is in the middle of August, so it's not it's not going to be that close to. All that's out, what I'm though. saying. Is Punk going to debut a couple weeks before All Out, or is uh, he going to? That's a. Whew, that's that's a stretch, unless. Oh, unless. he could he could throw up like a graphic. And be like, see you at All Out or something. And then yeah. you know the actual return might be it all out. Yeah, because they 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 can do something to like if like if they're if they're gonna, I guess if they want him to have a match at all out, then they might use rampage to to get him there and then mm. build on a feud up to all out. Mm. But that could be yeah. A this, well, this 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 is why I, I like this shit. This is why I'm thinking Darby versus Punk at all out. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm either way, I'm all for it. 
you know, we I mean it's it's guaranteed at this point Punk is signed, uh Danielson is signed. Um it's just a waiting game now to see how the fuck they're gonna book this shit and where they actually debut, both oh. um on screen and in the ring. Well, I'm definitely thinking Danielson shows up for that New York show, especially because the way they keep plugging it on the crawl, they mm-hmm. say, do not miss this historic event. Oh, wow. Yeah. Huh. Okay, so I haven't been paying attention to the crawl. So, yeah, if they're saying it like that, then wait. See, and that, that's, where, that's where they get me because they say historic. I don't know if it's because of the fact that it's, the I think, their first stadium show. Yeah. Or if it's because of the fact that, you know, Danielson's going to be there. So why not both? Why not both? Why not both? Fire off the first shot, AEW. But um but from uh from there, well, in, in in the midst of all that, we had a situation where Cody was backstage and they went to ask him a question about, you know, everything going on and then he got attacked by Malachi Black. Which Word. Oh, go ahead. Just finish this one up. <laughs> um, no, I, I just thought about another promo, but yeah. Oh, yeah. He um, Malachi back attacked Cody, and they they kind they kind of brought out to the ramp, and that's kind of where that um that ended because it got broken up after uh, a murder fucking happened. I, I don't I don't forget who who's the who's the mask guy that they had out there. I, Serpentico. No, it wasn't Serpentico. It was no, no, my bad. Fuego de Sol. Alabama's Fuego. like sole luchador. Okay, yeah. So but yeah, yeah he, Fuego del Sol. He he died on impact of that roundhouse. So I don't know if um like I mean he can't he can't be okay because as soon as his his neck went back, he hit the ramp. He was he done. Like Malachi Black committed a murder on Dynamite, and nobody <laughs> and nobody said shit. They, nobody just let, did, they just let the shit go, and that 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 was that. But you know, what the fuck ever? <laughs> what the right. fuck ever? Straight um, murder. Yeah. So yeah. R.I.P. to uh, what Fuego Del Sol. Yeah. 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 Okay, he yeah. uh, started off on BTE with Sammy Guevara when they did like his vlog versus BTE for a second, mm. and then he started competing on Dark and whatnot, and he still competes on Dark and whatnot. Fair enough. Okay. Well, hopefully they resurrect him and he can go back to wrestling on Dark, um, and possibly stay away from Malachi Black. So mm. you know, you know, um, he he wrestle. Go uh, go ahead, give him a Fuego Reborn. You know, throw that <laughs> card out there. But um, but yeah, so we end up having a defense for the IWGP United States Championship, Lance Archer versus Hikuleo, with Father Haku, King Haku, the man baddest man in professional six wrestling. Foot ten, jeez. There it was. Yeah. Um. This 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 was this was a pretty much standard big man match. It was really to showcase Hikaleo. Um my first time ever seeing him wrestle. Yeah. Um I think he Same actually. Yeah, yeah, same here too. I think um he's gonna do fantastic. Whoa, after whoa, wait, he... wait. There was an announcement before this match. There was. That's what I was gonna get to, but wait, wait, I don't know wait, if which... you wanted to tie it in. Uh where oh, Tony oh, yeah, Khan. With, um, Pulled back the forbidden door. Mm-hmm. Just one more time. Showed off for the first time the century champion of New Japan pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. One Hiroshi Tanahashi. Absolutely. And you say, I got next. Which I said, love this. Whoever wins. Is is going to be at his mercy, pretty much, because it's a title that he has not won. Mm-hmm. And he wants yep. it, and yep. um, did Mox's promo happen after? Well, you know, it don't matter. We're talk about it now anyway. That was after. Um, yeah, we'll we'll talk we'll talk about it now. Um, again, 
same thing alluding to the forbidden door even more because it's their thing this is um them doing their own you know aw professional wrestling universe i want to say cinematic but you know hey we're not going to go there with marvel um <laughs> mox again being fucking mox the the one one of one of the promo princes of professional wrestling uh -huh. came in and said you know i sent contracts out you know i sent fillers out been unanswered it's like you know they say COVID can't go to japan because of COVID and all this other stuff going on it's like, like how he the, caught out all the olympic athletes like you can send yeah. all these olympians to japan but what, what you can't send me there mm -hmm. yeah he was like he was like oh he was like oh I said all these contracts, nothing. I even called out Tanahashi, nothing. The moment I lose the belt, the champion all gets to sudden, go to Japan. Walk through that forbidden door. He's like, oh, so it's like it's okay. It's like now that that forbidden door is open, it's like be careful when you walk through it because the only thing that's going to be waiting for you is a bad time. Mm -hmm. So I wonder how they're going to do that match since Archer, which. Archer retains the title. Since yeah. Archer has to go to Japan to fight Tanahashi, I wonder how they're going to do that match. So, wait, so, so that's official. So he, he he is going to Japan to defend the title. Yeah, that, yeah, that's what they were saying. They were saying that okay. the winner goes to Japan to mm -hmm. fight Tanahashi. I was a little yeah. sad by that. I would have loved to see Tanahashi come to the states Same. and, and yeah, like thought, wrestle yeah, Archer at All Out or something. But this does make sense, though, because, again, since they since they are, you know, whole forbidden door thing, instead of everybody mm. coming to AEW, now they're going to showcase AEW feuds in New Japan. Because mm, I true. guarantee you, I guarantee you, once they have that match with Lance Archer and Tanahashi, Mox is going to be there. Absolutely. And Absolutely. they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna push that now and even have, like, Tony Khan and all AEW management ain't playing. Like they they gave they they gave you little tidbits and seeds here and there, but give you a little taste. Yeah, mm -hmm. and now they're like, you know what? Hey, we got we got all our ducks in a row, and now we finna just go for broke. Oh, CM Punk got him. Brian Danielson got him. Got him. Partnership with Impact got it. Partnership got it. with T with Triple A got it. Oh. Oh, oh, Nick Khan wants to say that he's talking to uh New Japan. <laughs> nope. We talking to New Japan. Got it. So he's got Tanahashi on a promo. Like, like what, what 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 more do you need? But, Nicoleo showed up, got it. Man, maybe we'll get the Gorillas of Destiny on uh on AEW. Ooh, don't give me hope. Right? Ugh. Some good old good old God from the from the BC, mm -hmm. but um, but from there two promos. I know we, we we missed one, but I'll talk about it now. Um, Pac was having an interview with um, mm -hmm. and one and then of course, um, Alex Marvez had uh had asked where uh Penta and Phoenix were, and he said. Which yeah, I forgot yeah. to tell you, uh, 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 Cornette's nickname from Marvez is Officer Barb Brady. Wow. That's messed up. Wow. That's messed up. <laughs> why, why, why you got to go at, at Marvez like that? That's messed up. I haven't listened to Cornette in a while. I think I'm going to listen to – I haven't listened to Cornette since uh, since the uh, Blood and Guts match, but I'm going to listen to him to see what – See how he feels about this Nick Gage and uh, Chris Jericho match. Because he does not like Nick Gage, of course. Spe spe speaking of which, um, Cornette and Brian Lass gave me an idea mm -hmm. from, what, from when I listened to one of his four. And I think that we may need to do something like that. Uh -huh. um, pro pro probably for like a hot tag or something like that. But we'll, um, we'll, 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 get, we'll get more into that on another time. But yeah. Right. Well, well, not not for you, not for you watching. We us three will oh, get yeah. into it after this. But yes. for y'all, you you'll see it coming. Stay you know. tuned. You'll see <laughs> exactly. the fruition. But um, but yeah, uh, Alex Marvez was interviewing Pac, and Pac was without Phoenix and Penta, and he asked where they were, and he said, "Well, of course you can see that they're not here, and it's because they uh, 
they 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 missed their uh their car their their car ride was uh was interrupted so they ended up getting a new driver or whatever so then you get Chavo coming in which they they technically made up for last week's shit because Chavo came in and you know he basically stated that you know maybe you should do better with uh mm -hmm. with with pick, we'll pick and rides for you guys and maybe you should keep an eye on them better and then you had good old Andrade. Fixing up his his English promo a little better this time too, and he said he said maybe you should find a better driver for them or somebody else may come along and do it for them, alluding to the fact that maybe he may end up taking Penta and Phoenix away from Pac. I thought that last week, honestly, mm -hmm. the way it was going last week, I thought Penta and Phoenix was going to betray Pac last week. It, yeah, it's 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 a weird situation too with how so, with how it's going. To put icing on the cake, he actually said that he got them. Oh no, sorry, Chavo told Pack he got Penta and Phoenix a limo. A limo. Uh, and, and then he broke it down. For, yeah, then he broke it down for Pack. He's like, oh, just so you know, that that's a, this is a really long car. <laughs> Like it's got it's got doors, it's got bars, it's got all that stuff inside. Did they ever do a follow up to that? Hmm. Did they ever do a follow up to what like, the limo? Oh no. Yeah, like showing Phoenix and uh. Mm -mm. No. Show up? Okay, I was making sure I didn't miss nothing. It could yeah, be is, uh... part of Dark or Elevation since oh, they right. do film those uh they do film those matches like that post AEW Dynamite. Yeah, it's, it, this this is interesting because like you, you we don't know where it's going, and and I and I and I and I like that. I like not knowing what's going to happen because it leaves room for interpretation, obviously, and yes. it still leaves us with that surprise where it's like, damn, I didn't see it coming, and it fucking happened. But I like yeah. it because we even we, even we said wh whichever way this shit goes, we like it because yeah. it. No, there's no, there's no outcome on here where it's like it's bad for any party. Everything works out perfectly. But this is definitely good for Andrade. It keeps him busy while like his match with Kenny is coming up. Mm -hmm. Which of course you end up, you could end up getting this shit by the time that match happens, and you can have Penta and Phoenix on the side of Andrade in AAA. Ooh. That'd be a good way to reveal them as on his side. Yeah, and what? then have Pac like, "Yo, why were you over there?" Like, you know, like what what happened? Because I think I think Penta and Phoenix are are like the tag champs at AAA. Mm. And so, Kenny did win that belt from Phoenix. That's true. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. And then defended it against him on uh, on Dynamite as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but. Uh, to get to get to get back on you know track with the with the matches before this match that Scoop probably hates, we had we had an amazing promo from none other than God's favorite champion himself, Miro. Oh my God! Hey, <laughs> I thought I felt bad for uh, Dante Martin, Lee Johnson. We might actually see another murder on TV. We just might. You know, we'll, we'll get a nice showcase from Mr. Mr. High Flying Lee Johnson. But, uh, um, big but, shoddy. Do, do y'all know how Lee Johnson became the contender for Mr. Miro? Yes, Ooh. I listened to your Jaeger at the Dark. You know, at the Dark. Plug, plug, plug. But yeah, that's for a those, dope way to be a contender. The, uh, that was that was interesting. So like. They had the All Elite GM game, and somebody won a tournament for this, and they said, okay, so if Lee Johnson wins this match, and the match composed of Lee Johnson versus the GM tournament's winner choosing an opponent for Lee Johnson, hmm. they said if Lee Johnson wins this match, he gets a shot at Miro. And the fucking guy, which they gave a belt to him, by the way, oh. like a special created like tournament. It had, it had a nice little, it's a custom belt. It looks nice. 
a little small for the guy, but it is what it is. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, uh, dude picked Luther, and yeah, Lee Johnson had to go up against Luther and take that W. Interesting. Interesting you would pick Luther. That's what I thought too. Uh, I didn't know if that was like predetermined and he just was on camera saying it or what. Yeah. But hey, hey, yeah. it is what it is. He he got he got the match. So yeah, he's gonna regret it. All right, <laughs> Peter, big shotty. Yeah, right. they 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 yeah. can sit him next to Fuego del Sol. Yep. Right it right after it, but um. Th- this whole thing with, with Miro alluding or, or, or you know, oh, doing, throwing little uh, tidbits of, 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 of uh, CJ. Oh, my God. His double-jointed wife. His um, double-jointed wife. I, and, 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 of course, it was said before that, that CJ was the reason for this whole resurgence of Miro. With, mm-hmm. with this whole God's favorite champion, like she's been helping him with his promos. Um, the more he talks about her, the more I believe that this is shit that he helped him, that, that she that she helped him with. Yes. Because oh, yeah. it's just, it's it's gold. It is it gold. Is. And, and that, that's the thing about, about AEW that, that I'm enjoying recently is because it's starting to feel more and more like old school NXT because of how they booked everybody like everybody wasn't mm-hmm. really on TV all the time or when they were they they weren't they didn't always have to wrestle or be in the ring mm-hmm. the yeah. promos did most of the talking and then when you saw them in the ring it's like it, it still felt fresh like it didn't feel like it was like overseeing their welcome you know and mm-hmm. even now they're 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 doing stuff with Cody to where it's like he's not taking up like 5 to 10 minutes of time on TV now he's like even with the whole Malachi Black thing it was a quick like you know, situation, and then it was over mm-hmm. with. So I think that he's like everybody's starting to understand, you know, where everything should fit and what everybody's mm-hmm. getting tired of. And the same thing with uh with with um Jay Cargill. You know, she hasn't been on TV like, you know, every week with those same promos because it was getting stagnant and very stale. For me, it was. So now she's, I'm like, she's Yo, getting promo hey. time on uh Dark and Elevation. Perfect. And apparently, her. Apparently, her new motif is to get into the film industry. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Um, she got contacted by some kind of agent from Hollywood who could possibly get her into being some Marvel stuff. Oh, this is legit it's, shit. I, I don't know if it's just a shoot or what, but uh, she did get in touch with what was his name? The promo that was cut. Uh, oh yeah, that was on. Yeah, they did an in. Oh, it was two weeks ago. Oh no, sorry, it was last week. They had her talk to, and I'm sorry that this is taking me so long to dig through the book. <laughs> but they had her talk to John Kanick. About being on some film and TV, said, "Hey, you know, we got, we know that you're a fan of X Men." And then she just name drops Storm out of nowhere. I don't think that's going to be the case. I don't think that's happening. But I mean, she could end up being an actress slash uh, wrestler. Mm-hmm. Go for her. I mean, hey, not mad at that at all. If the Rock and Cena can do it, why the hell not? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, but but yeah, I, look, M- M- Miro is getting away with murder with everybody. So yes, uh, I I no. don't know. I th- I think they're just going to keep pushing this until they they get him a challenger because it's clearly not going to be Lance Archer. Um, yeah. yeah. So I yeah i i don't because i don't know any faces no. right now that's going to pose any kind of threat unless they outsource that shit to another promotion or bring in some new talent are that yeah i mean i look they want to bring in buddy murphy cool <laughs> uh oh no i was if, thinking like after his little feud with 
Darby, maybe even CM Punk. CM Punk is fine too. Um, personally, I, w- I would rather see Chad Gable come in. Ooh. And and give me some fucking some technical uh, masterpiece but of a match with a. Uh, yeah, I would love he, to see he, a strongman match between him and Murphy. Look. I, th- I think, but I, th- I think, I think Gable only has like maybe three more months on his contract. Mm, that. Uh So, hey, we'll see. But, yeah, but we get a uh, Christian Cage and Jurassic Express against HFO. Man, <laughs> Christian Cage gets the pin. They win. That's it. Uh, the highlight of this, because this is why I'm not talking this, because I, really, I honestly don't care about it either. Um, the 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 triple German suplex was was, was nice, mm. but um, what really stood out can was AEW say Chris Benoit? I mean, yeah, they, yeah, they can say it. They should be able to. Just just asking. Anyways, <laughs> but um. Yeah, the, the the standout in in this, and it wasn't even part of the match. It was uh, it was the blade, because yes. they 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 they've been sticking to this whole thing with him and and Cassidy, and this whole brass knucks thing, and the fact that he came out of nowhere and just decked Christian Cage with the brass knucks, I was like, you know what? Now I'm interested because they're running with something that I didn't care about, but because they've stuck to it, and it's becoming a thing. I'm like, you know what? Out of everything Hardy family related, this is what interests me because they're building Blade up even more. And they did it outside of stuff with with the Hardy family office. So I'm cool with this because that gives him a first matchup with Christian and it gives Christian something to do while he's staying away from any title within AEW at the moment. So, yeah. So if they want to do something with Christian outside of AEW, I would say that they should have him go to Impact and do some stuff over there since he was a previous uh, or former uh, Impact champion or TNA champion. So, but yeah, that's who goes over. Moving on. Thunder Rosa versus Julia Hart. Congrats to Thunder Rosa being officially, like we said, officially on the uh, AEW roster. Thunder Rosa, though. Thunder Rosa, though. Uh, it's it's so, it's so sad that poor Julie Hart looks so innocent. And she had to just take that beat down. And she had to take that beat down. Uh, I mean, she fits the motif for, for you know, the Varsity Blondes whole aesthetic. Uh huh. But I, it, it's yeah, it, it's it's definitely hard to watch her in the ring because of the, of the fact that she just gets that yeah, she's like she like she doesn't belong there. That's not that's no slight against her. It's just the way that her character is. Mm-hmm. Um, because I guarantee you that you know they put her in a different aesthetic, she would probably look completely opposite from what she's portrayed as. So yeah, it's. It, Thunder Rosa goes over, but she when when Thunder Rosa did her uh her finisher, it looked like it almost didn't go well for a second. Like it was kind of no, awesome. it did it did look like she was slipping or something. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, Th- Thunder Rosa goes over. Uh, this really doesn't do anything for her because Julia Hart wasn't, I, I guess, in any type of ranking, and Thunder Rosa is already ranked, so this just adds another win. And I don't see her going against Britt Baker anytime soon. Um, unless now if she wants to go after um Serena D, then hey. Or what well, no, well, Serena D doesn't have a title anymore. Uh-huh. Um so well shit. Well uh, again, I don't see her going against Britt Baker anytime soon. I get they're they're probably they're probably gonna save that for the next uh big show that they have, if anything, or they're gonna wait till Britt Baker gets healed up, which may take a couple months. If anything, because I don't yeah. know how bad I don't know if she fractured or she broke her wrist. Um, 
Not sure. All I see is that she's got a pretty nice cast now. <laughs> yeah, so that's that that that's that's where it's a little weird. But um, but yeah, Thunder Rosa goes over. There we go. But from there, we get our very bloody, very brutal main event. But before I get into that, I will say congrats to Matt Cardona. Yes. For winning the GCW championship. Yes. And whew, dealing with, with a lot of BS. Yes, um, he did. That was unnecessary. But very. it um yeah, it, it, it was. And you know, this is where fans get very passionate, especially oh, indie me. wrestling fans get very passionate because you know they, they become they become loyal to the person that that that, that is actually the face. Or the foundation of of a promotion, and Nick Gage was that. Yeah. So it's you know it's understandable, but it's also unacceptable at the same time because you know you have to give people a chance. Like you can't expect somebody to be there forever. You know as much as you would want them right. to, because at the same time this makes sense because I do believe that Nick Gage is now currently signed to AEW. Oh, I it? believe. Let me let me just double check. Um, but I do believe that 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 was one of the. Uh, hmm. While you're checking that, did y'all see the pictures of post match Matt Cardona? Yeah, because look, he 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 went there in white gear. It was all white with yeah, a little bit of purple here and there. And at the end of it, it was completely red. Yes. Oh no, I'm talking about also. And shout out to Chelsea Green here, but there was some doctoring of him in his hotel room, and even his sheets were still bleeding. Damn. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, he's, he's he's not on the roster. He's not shown on the roster, so I don't think he's signed officially yet. But yeah, um, yeah, Matt Matt Card, whew, Matt Cardona, yeah, he he definitely. Went through it. Yes. Yes, he did. But somebody who also went through it is Jericho. Um, there, yes. there, there's a lot that I did not expect to happen in this match. Um, primarily, uh, again, added to the list, a spot I would not take. That um, that that that. that, that the no, I mean, I, I'd probably take that over the glass spot. Oh, good. Because suplexed into the glass, yeah. Yeah, getting suplexed like they look. I I think I would rather take thumbtacks over the glass, all day, because yes. agree. I've, I've I've walked in broken glass and I've had glass stuck in my because I walk I've walked in broken glass barefoot and I've had it stuck in my foot and it is uncomfortable. No, no. and. Attack you can pull out, but this yeah. shit and the way that Jericho went and got suplexed into the glass, and for him to when as soon as he got up, it's like he bled instantly. So I don't think this was any like Mox and, and Omega like sugar glass shit. The, I I believe that this was actual like an actual glass like yeah. panel because yeah I. And also, I mean, even uh, side note on that, I, when Jericho took his mask off, I, I don't know if his if his eyes were irritated, but they were just like bloodshot. They red. were bloodshot. So um, unless unless he decided to say, you know what, here, let, let, let me smoke a bowl and let me just take like a shot, a hundred shots or whatever to prepare my body for this bullshit. You know what? This I would need something to help me prepare or slash numb whatever the hell is coming my way. Yeah, cause for and I, I, I like how the how how they started off with the with the pizza cutter on the arm like instantly. First blood. Yeah, right. It was like okay, so it's like yeah, let, let's let everybody know that this this shit is real. It's sharp as fuck. Here we go. Um, but as, as they progressed through the match, you know, Nick Gage did yeah. you know he 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 did he did, a, he did a few wrestling moves here and there. I mean, it, it's it's part it's part of his repertoire, but. You know, the, the the main course of this was for it to get bloody, and that's exactly what happened, and they did not waste any time with it. 
Nope. Um, it did feel rushed, but I, yeah. I I get why because I think with with uh, with TNT, there's only so much you can show yeah. within a period of time. So I think that's one of the main reasons why they did that and why they incorporated everything. Not like how they did with Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker in their unsanctioned match. But, but yeah, this I, I was surprised Jericho went through as much as he went through. Yes, same. Uh, this also shows the passion that he has for the business and just the the amount of confidence he has for AEW as a promotion to go through all that for that company because he doesn't have to. No, not at all. Nope. Um, and to put over Nick Gage at that as well. So, it, yeah. Uh, again, the glass spot, I can do without. I, I would need it. I'll even throw something else in the hat, man. I would not take um, tubes or light tubes to the forehead. Like, uh, Which one? The, the slamming or the jabbing? You know what? Probably the jabbing. I thought okay. about this. <clears throat> I would take a. I would take somebody breaking a light tube over, not See, stabbing me with it. But. Exactly. I wouldn't take the stabbing, <laughs> but the, if you want to break a light tube over my back, yeah, I'd probably take that. Kind of like the R, even like the way Jericho did to win the match, how he broke it, broke the stack, and then yeah. you know he hit the Judas effect after, but. Yeah. I think I think I think I'd do a light two spot. I wouldn't do the glass spot because, like you said, that was legit glass. So yeah. I wouldn't do uh, the glass spot. But I think I'd do uh, the the light two. Yeah. Shout, yeah. Shout shout out to the uh, to to the uh, uh, the Hurricane Rana into into the glass. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like that spot. It was God. nice because uh, I, I, lo I love the visual. I don't want to take the pizza cutter spot either. I, I would take the pizza cutter spot over the glass. I would yeah. take the pizza cutter spot. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind that. It would hurt like fucking hell, especially with the way that he was going across Jericho's forehead. Yeah, yeah. It was like, yo, bro, like go go up a little bit. You see, it felt like he was going in the same spot. Like like mm -hmm. you, you're trying to get to his fucking skull. Like I, I don't need that. Um, funny enough, um, Domino's. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, during all these pizza cutter spots, Domino's ad popped up. Um, I believe Scoot, you said that they're they're not too happy about this. Uh hold on. They have a statement. They said uh Domino's Pizza is disavowing any knowledge or involvement in AEW's bloody telecast Wednesday night. <laughs> so basically, and they are threatening that, that to and they are threatening to pull any ads from AEW. Wow. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, hey, look, it's it's look, it 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 didn't stop me from wanting to get Domino's. So <laughs> I mean, you know, at that I point, it's a, a, I could use a thing, Chris, right about now. Right. You know. Hey, Domino's. They 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 helped you. Mm-hmm. They they helped you, Domino's. How many times you seen a pizza cutter in in wrestling? <laughs> outside of GCW, <Yeah. laughs> but uh, but yeah, uh, just like you said, Scoot Jericho goes over with the Judas effect, which they are keeping that move strong. Yeah, uh, which which I do like. So it did it didn't make Nick Gage looking bad. I mean, we all knew that Jericho was going to go over because I mean he's got to yeah. go through these labors. But it's very interesting how they're going about this labors of Jericho thing, because again, just like we talked about AEW. We can't guess what the fuck they're gonna do. We speculated and we were all wrong. Mm -hmm. And case in point, you know, to add to that, MJF did his, his his typical thing, comes out at the end, and you know, mad that Jericho got over, but he said, you know, doing callbacks to what they what they talked about before. Mm -hmm. And it's funny how you know Jericho had told him to, to Google Hoop and Guerrero. And he's like, I did Google him. And now Jericho has to, I, I guess he, I guess he said he has to win with the top with the top rope move. Mm, yeah. Or you just have to yeah, perform he, a top he rope. Just, 
If you just hit a move from the top rope, he wins. Oh, okay. No, I thought yeah. he had to finish with the top uh, rope. Okay. Uh, if, so, he, if he just hits an opponent with a top rope move, he wins. So now we're going to get Juventud Guerrero on, on TV. And mm -hmm. uh, has let me see, because I don't think he's been doing anything. They said he hasn't wrestled or done anything in like 15 years. Probably since oh, WWE sorry, when he was part of the right. Nexon. I'm sorry, y'all all right. He has to finish with a top rope. Yeah, he has to finish with a top rope move. Mm. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I'm get. Oh wait, no, he he did he did he did triple A, but oh, okay. um, but yeah. So. Okay. Okay. So yeah, he he so he's 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 still he's still been somewhat good. Uh, yeah. Who 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 been Guerrero was was one was one of my favorite. Uh, Luchadors in WCW, um, probably because once he once he had his mask removed, he looked like Michael Jackson to me a little bit. Kind of like a Mex like a, Mike's, like a Mexican like a yeah my, like a Mexican Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. Um, it was it was it was always funny to me when I seen him, but you know, again, him Mysterio, Psychosis, La Parca. The park All those guys with the, within that the chair the, the the original chairman, but um, but yeah, uh, I I don't know I look I look forward to this because since I haven't seen Hoover Two Guerrero in a long time, as far as as far as match wise, I'm hoping that they know what they're doing. Which I mean I, I, I I'm pretty sure that they do. But yeah, at this point. I'm 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 hoping to see something good or uh, or what's the word I'm looking for? I'll say impactful. In 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 the favor of Hoobinsu, like give give him a good like because what well, he's he's 46 now, so oh geez. um yeah, so him and it, hope hopefully him and Jericho have. I don't want I don't want them to have a have a have an old band luchador match. I want them to have like an impressive, mm. like veteran, seasoned luchador match. So, and I know I know Jericho's gonna pull something off because I, I you know they wouldn't do this if he wasn't going to. So, hopefully we get that. But outside of that main event, out of everything that happened on AEW this week, y'all have any final thoughts? I am I'll just be honest, man. It wasn't until FTR versus uh Proud and Powerful that I started kinda like I had to get myself back into dynamite because seeing that the loss from the ten man tag was just like a little dis I was I was disappointed. Yeah, was it kinda that. I'm not gonna lie, it did kinda take me out of it just like <laughs> it did. But Understood. aside from that, solid night. Aside from the Christian and Jungle and uh, Lucha Express versus the Hardy Family Office. Yeah. Like as much as I want to try and care about it, I, I just don't. <laughs> I'm in the same. I mean, well, y'all know how I feel about anything HFO. So. Yeah. Yeah. What about your final thought, Scoop? Uh, I wish I would have saw the Proud and Powerful versus FTR match. You know, uh, once again, shouts out to Thunder Rosa for officially being all elite. Yep, yep. Um, oh, this was her birthday week, by the way. Oh, well, then happy birthday, happy belated oh, happy, birthday. Happy belated birthday. Yeah. And we just, I'm just waiting to see how these next few weeks play out. Yeah, it's fine. Um, what about you? Uh, I'll keep, I'll keep it simple. AEW, keep proving me wrong, because I'll have to keep over, I'll have to keep coming on here every week, retracting statements that I've made, because you keep being unpredictable and making mm -hmm. me look stupid. <laughs> so I have to come in here and correct myself and then apologize for it. I don't like it, <laughs> but I like it. So, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Dark Order, keep handling business. Malachi oh, yeah. Black, 
send uh, Cody Rhodes packing for a little bit so he can come back um, for a resurgence. As a, <clears throat> As a heel, yes, yes. Um, Punk Danielson, see you soon. Yes. Oh yeah. I, I look. I look forward to getting your your tag endorsement as well. We're coming for it. Yes, sir. All day. All day. But uh, other than that, scoop. Let the people know where they can find you. You know, you saw MJF. You saw FTR. They represent the pinnacle. The problem is they don't represent the scootical. Because, mm-hmm. see, they think they're at top. Mm-hmm. But they never looked up. See, the problem is when you think you're on the top, you mm-hmm. gotta look up every now and then. Yep. Wait, and if they were to bother to ever look up, I would be down there doing that. Waving right. at them. Right. Fuck is this dude up there? Yeah. Because I reside on the scootical. That's where I reside. But you know what? And MJ, while MJF is probably wondering, who the fuck is that? All you got to do is tell him. You're Googleable. I'm Googleable. 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 I mean, not to toot horns or anything, but when you start to put in the work and the work starts to pay off, Google. You know, it's been scrolling at the bottom. There it is right there. Boom. Instagram, Twitch, YouTube, <laughs> TikTok, <laughs> East Scooter Ray. You know, of course, with the less than stealthy ninjas. You oh, know, mm-hmm. same apps. Catch us on Anchor, <laughs> catch us on Spotify, catch us on Google Podcasts and other places, podcast play. Google. Shouts out to Boss Ryan Zerk. We're Googleable out here in these streets. Absolutely. But to 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 bring it to to the ladies. To the oh. ladies. To the ladies. You know. Um, where can they find you, Mr. Jaeger, especially if they wanna, you know, give you that final slice? Yo. Mm. If I'm ever getting a final slice, it's gotta be from the one and only. Red Velvet. Mm. It just makes that look move look so good. Almost <laughs> tasty, if I can say. Oh. But aside from here on this couch with that dog over there, um, you can you can find me, Jaeger Bombastic. So fantastic. Oh, it's right there on the right there on the crawler. Oh, right there it is. Right man, good man, man. Instagram, Twitch, Twitter, uh, Xbox, PlayStation, it's all under the same name. Boom, boom. And, and, and whenever you do, stop shop. And then whenever <laughs> you do feel like gaming, and then you do end up losing, and then you're getting yourself in your feelings, finding out just, you know, how do you, how do you bounce back from these L's? You, you, know, you need you a little pick me up. There has to be somebody we know. Who does somebody, somebody? Somebody. Oh yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, that guy right there. Yeah, that guy. Oh, this guy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You're right. I do have this this little bitty um podcast called Lifestyle One Up. Get your daily dose Monday through Friday in the morning time. You know to get your day started, just like oh yeah, some percolating coffee. Oh, I love me some coffee in the morning. Right, right. On all your podcast oh. listening platforms. Oh. If you need oh. to find, if you need help finding it, just like Scoot said, that shit is also Googleable. But, but if you want to shoot the shit, if you want to try to come back and forth with me and say how much I should care about X wrestler here. X promotion there, X title here. Hit uh, me up. Impact. Lip Dizzle, your IGs, your Twitters, your Twitches, your TikToks, your YouTubes, all that good shit. I am open for all types of communication. Ring it. Like Samoa Joe says, provoke me. Mm. But with me, all that like out this. the way, 
<laughs> oh. 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 oh, sorry. Cross branding. Cross branding. <laughs> I mean, he started it. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know what? That's fine. That's fine. You, you know you know what else I'll start? I'll start a two sweet to my bros. Hey, I'm almost down for that one. Wow. Bam. Ah. And I'll also give all the beautiful people out there a do, bidding them a do, letting them know that until next time, when you see these handsome faces, hear these these caramel-like voices. Until Money next time. Money in your ear. Money in your ear. Oh, until next funny. time. Yeah, you know, I know. Honey, oh, honey okay. equals money. But until honey, next time, tag the fuck it. <laughs>